camouflaged prototypes appeared in broad daylight in the Bay Area. And they weren't test cars at all. That compact shape, the familiar 18-inch wheels, and the opaque roof left a disturbing question hanging in the air. Could this be the long-awaited Tesla Model 2? Those who saw it up close noticed subtle but revealing details. The panoramic glass was gone, giving way to a solid, much lighter roof. At first glance, it seemed like a simple choice, perhaps even disappointing for luxury enthusiasts. But the real intention goes far beyond the visual. It's about calculated efficiency, gram by gram, piece by piece. Removing the glass roof may seem like a small saving, but it actually reduces the car's overall weight by about 20 kilobatters. This may not seem impressive at first, until you remember that the Model 2 will come with a smaller battery, somewhere between 40 and 50 kilobatters. Every kilo saved here means more miles up front. With a lower center of gravity, cornering and braking performance also improve, making for a more stable ride. In other words, it's not just about cutting costs, it's an engineering strategy with a direct impact on range and drivability. Another striking detail was the wheels, the same as those on the Model 3 Photon. No futuristic design or exotic materials. They're practical, proven, and most importantly, cheaper for mass production. The Kumho 235 Toc 50R18 tires reinforce this vision. Durability at a controlled cost. There's nothing visually impressive, and that speaks volumes about the car's philosophy. What's being prepared is something geared toward everyday use for those who need an efficient, affordable, no-frills car. The gray interior trim, visible from some angles in the drone photos, also provided valuable clues. No Alcantara, no vegan leather. What we saw was simplicity. A basic upholstery, likely fabric, in a neutral hue. It may seem Spartan, but it's precisely this kind of design that allows Tesla to compete in a territory dominated by aggressively priced Chinese brands. Every aesthetic decision in this car seems guided by a cost-benefit spreadsheet, but always adhering to a minimum engineering standard. The presence of these prototypes on public roads indicates that development is at an advanced stage, nearing the transition point between testing and official announcement. And time reinforces this. The big launch event is just days away, which strengthens the theory that this car, previously kept secret, is indeed the Model 2. It's rare to see Tesla allow this kind of leak without a strategic purpose. Showing these prototypes to the public may be part of a calculated campaign to build anticipation, especially among those hoping for an affordable Tesla. And if the visuals are eye-catching, what they hide is even more intriguing. The body appears to have been redesigned to be shorter, lower, and with fewer aerodynamic creases. Another clue that we're looking at a new project from scratch, not a simple adaptation of the Model 3. Some say the chassis uses lighter alloys and new solutions to reduce drag, weight, and complexity. This isn't just a smaller Tesla, but a Tesla born with other priorities, low range, minimal production costs, and robustness for fleet customers. It's worth noting that these changes don't mean a worsening of the situation, but rather an adaptation. It's as if Tesla realized that insisting on luxury in every model no longer meets the new consumer profile. Times have changed. Now the focus is on scaling production and conquering emerging markets, where price and simple maintenance outweigh a sunroof or heated seats. The Model 2 isn't a downgrade. It's a shift in focus. It's the Tesla designed for millions of people, not just those looking to impress in the work parking lot. If the exterior already reveals the cost-cutting plan, it's in the rest of the car that this strategy is even more clearly confirmed. Tesla decided to eliminate some of its fans' most beloved features, and the list is not short. Goodbye to the continuous LED bars on the front and rear, which previously created that striking, futuristic look. These bars, besides being expensive, consume more energy and require additional circuits. 
Cutting them may seem like a small move, but in the world of electric cars, where every watt counts, it makes a difference. It's like trimming every corner to gain cumulative efficiency. In practice, these continuous lights can consume up to 30 watts more than conventional optical assemblies. When you consider thousands or millions of cars, this extra consumption becomes a significant loss. Replacing them with simpler headlights and taillights not only relieves the electrical system, but also reduces assembly costs. There's less work on the production line, fewer connectors, fewer modules, and less chance of defects. And the curious thing is that, despite the absence, the look remains modern enough for the average consumer, who rarely pays attention to such technical details. Another example of this subtraction engineering is the rear-view mirrors. Forget the automatic electric folding when locking the car. A cool but unnecessary feature. And along with it, the built-in courtesy lights are also gone. While seemingly mere conveniences, these elements require additional wiring harnesses, dedicated motors, sensors, and a dedicated control module. By eliminating all of this, Tesla reduces the overall weight by about 2 kg and also simplifies the vehicle's electronics. Fewer wires, less software, less energy wasted by components that, in the end, don't change the driving experience. These changes may seem minor at first, but they're part of a much broader plan. The Model 2 aims to achieve an efficiency of 6 to 7 miles per kilowatt, something no current Tesla crossover has achieved. Achieving this figure doesn't just require a good battery or an efficient motor. Everything that consumes energy without directly impacting performance must be eliminated. Even invisible elements, like control units that run in the background, are being cut. Tesla isn't just streamlining the car, it's redesigning the logic behind it. Aerodynamics also plays into this equation. The E41Y prototype's body appears to have been designed with an obsession with reducing drag. Smooth surfaces, rounded angles, and a lower front end indicate a focus on moving air with minimal drag. The company's internal goal, according to leaks, is to achieve a drag coefficient below 0.22. For comparison, the current Model Y hovers around 0.23 to 0.24. It may seem like a small difference, but that extra tenth can yield extra miles per charge. And that's a game changer for a car with a smaller battery. Even the smallest details are being revisited. The present sensors in door handles, for example, appear to be absent from the prototypes. Another way to eliminate electrical parasitism. Similarly, the door opening system can be manual rather than motorized, which eliminates redundant circuits and simplifies the door structure. By eliminating small motors, relays, and sensors, Tesla also reduces the risk of failure, improves assembly time, and lowers warranty costs. It's almost like going back to basics, but with an eye toward the future, a paradox few manufacturers are willing to explore. This more raw approach might even scare those accustomed to the Tesla way of impressing. But in reality, what's being done here is an exercise in prioritizing what's essential to the company's long-term mission. If the goal is to popularize electric vehicles, it needs to make them viable for those still stuck with combustion engine cars for cost reasons. This means giving up some perks for the sake of something bigger. The target audience now isn't the enthusiast who buys Tesla for status, but the everyday driver seeking economy and practicality. If the Model 2's exterior has already made it clear that Tesla is willing to compromise on luxury, the interior doesn't try to disguise that intention. What was once synonymous with premium finishes now gives way to a minimalist and functional aesthetic. The seats which in higher-end models come with vegan leather upholstery and power adjustments, are now simple fabric with manual adjustments. It's a change that may seem radical, but it has a clear logic. Each smaller motor means less weight, fewer cables, and less power consumption. Tesla is cutting back where the average customer can tolerate it, as long as the price is right. Another notable feature is the absence of comfort features that have become almost standard in current models. Forget ventilated seats, a heated steering wheel, 
or customizable RGB ambient lighting. All of these have been left out. Tesla has chosen to eliminate any features that don't directly contribute to the driving experience or safety. The focus here is practicality. This isn't to say the interior will be unpleasant, but rather that it was designed to be honest, straightforward, and distraction-free. It's the basics done right. No promises of luxury, but solid delivery. Even the rear of the cabin has undergone adjustments. The 8-inch passenger-only screen, present in recent models like the updated Model Y, has been removed. The sound system, previously comprised of 13 speakers, has been reduced to 10. There's no longer a single center armrest, but a simpler two-piece support. These cuts allow for savings that, combined, amount to over $1,000 per unit. And most interestingly, almost all of this goes unnoticed by those simply driving from point A to point B. Tesla, however, maintained the features that directly impact safety. Airbags, seat belt pretensioners, structural reinforcements, and electronic stability control remain. It's as if the company has applied a rigorous filter. This is nice, but not essential. This, yes, saves lives. The philosophy is clear. Cut luxury, maintain protection. And this is especially important for those considering trading in an old combustion engine for an affordable electric car. Confidence in safety is key in this decision. Another curious point is that, even with these modifications, the car doesn't feel cheap. The material and finish choices follow a coherent logic. Nothing seems improvised or poorly fitted. The dashboard maintains its clean lines, the steering wheel has the same shape as the more expensive versions, and the multimedia center continues to dominate the console. The difference lies in the details. Fewer layers of material, fewer decorative elements, fewer superfluous items. But the essentials are there. The feeling of being inside a Tesla. This attention is strategic. According to industrial disassembly data, interior components typically represent 15% to 20% of a vehicle's total production cost. By removing custom lighting, tuning motors, and additional displays, Tesla can save up to $1,800 per car without compromising its reputation for technical precision. This savings is no coincidence. It frees up budget to maintain the features that truly matter, such as the airbag system and autonomous safety modules. In fact, maintaining consistent safety standards is no small detail. Tesla has a history of high scores in NHTSA tests, and this plays a key role in convincing the average consumer. By streamlining the interior without compromising these points, the company signals that it's cutting corners intelligently, not carelessly. The result is a car that's lighter, cheaper to produce, and still reliable. A rare balance, especially in a segment where cutting costs often means sacrificing what matters. The Model 2's simpler interior isn't just a design decision, it's part of a complete overhaul that starts at the heart of the vehicle, the powertrain. Tesla is testing a new motor configuration, specifically designed to reduce the cost of mass production without compromising expected performance. Inside sources mention a new drive unit that significantly reduces the use of rare materials, cutting manufacturing costs by up to 25% compared to the motors used in the Model Y. This kind of optimization shows that the focus is on volume, and that changes everything. The entry-level Model 2 should offer between 180 and 200 horsepower with a 0-100 Klauner Tidelammerter Jar Serraro 62 MP Chaihertz acceleration time of around 7.5 to 8 seconds. This is more than enough performance for urban use, even highway driving. The all-wheel drive version, equipped with two motors, can reach 280 to 300 horsepower, keeping acceleration under 6 seconds. It's an interesting balance between cost and power. Tesla isn't trying to create an affordable sports car but rather a car that offers enough responsiveness and agility for everyday use, without the extravagance that would make the project more expensive. The suspension system has also been simplified. Instead of the adaptive suspension used in the Model Y, the Model 2 will come with a more basic but robust setup. 
The standard 18-inch wheels remain, but with a calibration geared toward durability. This decision can save between $800 and $1,200 per unit on components and assembly, in addition to facilitating future maintenance. This choice reinforces the idea of a car built for long-distance driving, without mechanical surprises or high repair costs. It's exactly the kind of solution that attracts fleet drivers and users seeking practicality. Another interesting aspect of the leaked documents is the temporary absence of a tire pressure monitoring system, TPMS. This drew attention because this component is mandatory in markets such as the US, Canada, and Europe. Experts believe the absence is merely a placeholder, something not yet integrated into the prototype, but will be included in the final version. Even so, it's further evidence of how Tesla is pushing the limits of simplification in every aspect of the design. Wherever it can be cut without violating regulations, the scissors are used. The new approach to the drivetrain and suspension shows that Tesla is willing to rethink everything from the ground up. It's not about shrinking the Model Y to make it cheaper. What's under development is a dedicated platform with specific solutions for mass production. From the outset, the Model 2 was designed as a mass market car, and that requires different decisions. Engineering here isn't focused on impressing, but on scaling. Reduce, simplify, optimize. These are words that appear repeatedly in internal reports and are reflected in every component tested. And this also extends to the car's electrical architecture. With fewer electronic modules, fewer redundant sensors, and fewer automated systems, the Model 2 should have a leaner internal communication network. This means less strain on the battery, less need for electronic cooling, and a greater margin for overall efficiency. All of this contributes to keeping energy consumption low, essential to achieving the 6 to 7 miles per kilowatt that Tesla is targeting for this model. Every decision seems designed to multiply, gains quietly, but effectively. From a consumer perspective, this translates into something simple. A car that delivers decent performance, simplified maintenance, and low running costs. For those transitioning from a combustion engine car, it's a welcome addition. And for those who already drive an EV, but want something more practical too. The duality between these versions, one more affordable and one with all-wheel drive, shows that the Model 2 aims to serve a broad spectrum of users without sacrificing luxury, but without sacrificing Tesla's core technology. By now, it's clear that the Model 2 isn't being designed to impress. It's being shaped to belong. And the target audience for this strategy isn't tech enthusiasts or hardcore Tesla fans. It's everyday drivers, those who need a reliable car to get to work, take their kids to school, shop, and drive a lot without breaking the bank. Tesla finally seems ready to compete for the heart of the streets, not just the spotlight. That means creating something that works for millions, not just the thousands who can afford a Model S. All signs of the E41 program point in this direction. The streamlined interior, the optimized engines, 